Today we're going to tackle an Apex ATSC to NTSC digital TV tuner box that um, I've had for a while and it blew up a long time ago. I thought I did a video on this before, but evidently I didn't. It didn't get published or I may have included it at the tail end or something, but I never got around to fixing it. Today we're going to start over on this thing and tackle getting this thing to power up. So let's check it out. This is an Apex DT502 digital TV converter box. Dead. And what this is for is this is for to allow people to use the older um, tube TVs to receive off air programming that uh, came into effect around what 2008, 2000, I think it was 2009 in Canada. All the uh, all the analog channels went off the air. Everything went digital, and what these boxes were for was so people could continue to uh, watch their programming off the digital stations. Well, that was really weird. My camera just shut down, and it said recovering data. So I wonder if this uh, Sandisk memory card is starting to go uh, go bad on me. Anyway, let's pop this thing apart. So in here you've got a power supply and you've got the the uh, audio video board. Since uh, some information got lost there, I had to put the top back on it just for you guys. Uh, we have a blown MOSFET. It's an IC, but it's actually a MOSFET right down here. It's got a big hole in it. I don't know what MOSFET this is, but there's not that many of them out there, so um, I might be able to maybe able to find one in something else that might work let's pop the power board out of this unit that was uh, totally unexpected but my camera just shut down for the second time and came up with a message telling me that it had to uh, repair the database. So I went and I copied the files onto my computer and I formatted the memory card. And we'll uh, pick it up and see whether it's still going to act up anyway. It's uh, magic smoke time. Um, what I don't know is whether this IC is the same as the one that's in this wall wart that has a heat sink on it, glued to the top of it, but um, because I can't tell, because I obviously can't see the number of it this one here the number is kind of obscured and of course this one's got a heat sink glued to the top of it so we're gonna pop the heat sink off of this one I think they're probably similar if not the same unit and uh, we're gonna pop the IC out of here and put it in this one and see whether it works because I have a sneaking suspicion that they're probably the same IC It's just, it's, a, it's just a MOSFET is all it is. It's not actually an integrated circuit. If you look down on the bottom here, you'll see that uh, uh, three of the pins are connected together because you've got a gate, a, a, a drain, a gate, and a source basically on here. So a couple of the pins are connected together. And I think the same is on this one yeah, here. You see a couple of pins connected together on this one as well. So I... I, I I have a sneaking suspicion that these are the same parts. So let's remove the donor part from this power supply that works. It just doesn't work very well. That way I can see whether I can get this uh, converter box working. Now these normally don't fail without a reason. And for a catastrophic failure like this has, I'm going to say it's probably the input 
filter. There's two input filters on here. They're relatively small, around 22 microfarads, 400 volt, that just does the filtering of the uh, rectified AC. And if the filters go open, you end up with a lot of ripple, and that ripple can cause the MOSFET to um, latch up and not switch on and off, which is what it's normally doing. It's normally switching on and off at a high frequency. If it latches, it's going to blow something. And in this case, it blew a hole right in the top of the MOSFET IC. So the donor is just a was it was a 12 volt uh, plug-in wall wart that uh, had failed, but was still oscillating, and still okay. putting out power, just not enough power. So I know that this part works. I know that the oscillator works because the, the wall wart was still working. It just wasn't putting out enough power. Here is my replacement. See if I can get the silicone that they use to glue the heat sink on. It's, it's not like silicon heat transfer. It feels like just silicone glue. We'll, we'll scrape this off so I can see what number this is. See if we can see any numbers and see if, if anything looks like the other one. So here's the here is the replacement. So I'm going to close up of that. See if we can see any numbers on it. So there it is. <clears throat> it's an LN 5R 12C. LN 5R 12C. Okay. Can we see any numbers on this one? Probably not. Well, we can't, but there's a good chance it's the same. And what's the worst that can happen, right? It can go boom. Uh, input filter cap probably should be changed on this. This one's got a couple of them. Looking to see which pins were uh, shorted together on this. So pin one was over here. So pin one, two, three, four. So it was the last two. Right? It was pin seven and eight. Was it seven and eight? Yeah. Seven and eight were connected together. And what is on this one? And yeah, it's seven and eight on here that's also connected together so the chances are it's the same or it's compatible because there's it's it's a MOSFET right so basically they're all going to be they're all going to be pretty much the same pin out Okay, one uh, blown IC with a hole punched in it, removed, and one functional IC to go in.
So let's check the ESR on these two uh, input capacitors. They're both rated 400 volts, 22 microfarads. So uh, 22 microfarad at 250 should be like 1.8 maximum. We'll check these ones, meter zeroed out. So here's one, 2.2, that one's probably fine. We'll go to this one, 50. That one is shot. So let's take this one out. This is likely why this uh, this this uh, MOSFET popped was because the input filter went bad. Oh yeah, it's completely open. One of the legs come right off of it. That's more than likely why this uh, MOSFET. I have a uh, 22 microfarad. Uh, this one's only uh, 250 volts instead of 400, but that should be fine because the peak voltage uh, is only going to hit around 160, 170 volts max, as it's uh, not being, you know, these these power supplies are usually universal. They work for like 90 to 240 volts, and uh, they, they put in caps that will, you know, will, will work for the higher voltage. They typically, what they do is uh, they make these things universal. So it's never going to be used on a 240 volt market. So a, a 200, 250 volt cap should be more than enough. Plus it's all I've got handy. There's a fuse on this. I'll check to see if it's blown. I didn't even blow the fuse when this thing popped. That's a good sign, I guess. In other words, semiconductors will protect the fuse for, by blowing first. Used to be an old running joke about that uh, years ago. I used to run in the comics and they were talking about the reliability of electronics. I would say a $300 pitcher tube will protect the 10 cent fuse by blowing first. Of course, the one I always enjoyed. The reliability of any electronic device is inversely proportional to the number of electrolytic capacitors it contains. No truer words. The more of these things, the more problems you're going to have. Okay, I'm going to power this up using my uh, light bulb, series light bulb, just in case something goes wrong so I don't uh, end up with a bunch of uh, sparks and flames and blow up a bunch of other parts. The moment of truth. Bang! I do believe we have power. Ha! <laughs> yes! Now, i got to see if this thing tunes anything, so i got to find a, an antenna. And um, i got to find a remote control. Now, as much as I would like to show this converter box is actually working, I can't. Because, you see, this broke down uh, a couple of years ago. And since that time, the FCC 
in the States and the CRTC in Canada reallocated the TV band to make way for the 600 megahertz um, 5G band. 600 megahertz and 700 megahertz is part of the 5G cellular band. And because of that, all the TV stations had to realign all their channels. And I need to do a rescan. But unfortunately, I can't do a rescan because I don't have the remote control handy. I do have the remote control for this unit, but I don't remember where I put it. It's in a box with a bunch of old remotes, and um, I don't remember where I put the thing. It's around here somewhere. I thought it was in my media closet, but it's not. So I gotta find the remote for this, and once I find the remote, I'll be able to do a scan and get this unit back in service. This was connected to one of my modulators at one time to provide me with an off-air channel on my house cable system. Uh, I forget which channel I had on here, but I had one of the one of the stations that uh, is local that is not on my... We, we get some of the channels on our cable system, but there's a couple channels that actually ran some pretty good programming that's not available on our cable system. And they were just a standard definition channel anyway, so uh, I used those and, and fed them out on one of my modulators, which is what this will be going back into service Again, as soon as I find the remote for it, which is around here somewhere, I just uh, don't have time to look for it today. I thought it was in a box with remotes. I went into a box that had a bunch of remotes in it, but wouldn't you know, the one remote I'm looking for, I don't know what's going on with this camera, but I just, I was talking to the camera, and I just happened to see out of the corner of my eye, it said, recovering data, please wait. So I don't know where it cut me off. It kind of looks like this SanDisk memory card is uh, on its way out, which is unfortunate because it's a big 128 gig card and it hasn't had that much use on it. I've only had it for about a year and it uh, seems like it's uh, maybe a year and a half, but it seems like it's uh, starting to, uh, to uh, I lose, I'm losing faith in it, let's say. I've tried reformatting it, but it's doing the same thing, which uh, is typical of flash memory. Stuff's crap sometimes. And uh, I think the bigger uh, the bigger memory cards can be more problematic than the smaller ones. It's not like I'm writing that much data to it. I think I'm writing it. Uh, I might be writing it at. Uh, I think I'm at 20 or, or 25, 20 maybe 28 megabits is what I'm writing at. I'm at quite a high bit rate, but I'm not. I'm not in 4K. 4K uses 60 megabits, and this card is rated at 80. So it should do 4K video, no problem. But uh, it's either the memory card is starting to F up or it's the camera that's starting to F up. One of the two. But uh, anyway, um, where was I? Anyway, okay, yeah, I know. I'm going to make another video on this. We'll do the uh, scanning of the channels once I locate the remote. To say it's, it's around here somewhere. I just uh, can't put my finger on it now. It, it It's probably in my media closet where it was before. It's more than likely fallen down in behind my rack because it used to sit on top of the rack. It's more than likely fallen down in behind there, but I don't feel like pulling the equipment rack out to look. And I can't see in behind it without pulling the rack out, which is a big job because there's lots of wires on it. Anyway, we know this thing works now because it didn't have power before and now it does. So this is more about how you can sub these MOSFETs. If you do, even if you don't know the number, of it like this one that just blew up you can sub one in and I might even be able to stick this stupid heat sink I don't think it's necessary though because this didn't have one before and this is not going to draw much power this came out of a um, a wall wart which was a much higher power rating it was a I think it was a 2 amp I doubt that this thing's going to draw no 2 amps from this might be lucky if it draws one anyway uh, the original didn't have a heat sink on it. I don't think it's going to be necessary on this. It blew up because that filter capacitor blew up. And I think we're okay as far as height goes. But I'm going to stick a piece of tape on top just in case. Because it might be a little bit close. So we're going to, we're going to insulate the top of that uh, cap. And I'm going to put this one together. When I find the remote, we'll make another video. To show this thing scanning the channels and show you what I can get. Till then, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.